Hello, welcome to Flooring Models. For this particular build, we're going to be tackling Rebels 148 scale Rafale M. Okay, so this one actually comes with the bombs and the racks, a little bit different. There is another incarnation with this one where it doesn't come with them. Basically, it's got a, a tier or a triple ejector rack system uh, down in here for some GBUs uh, bombs with this one. A little bit of a blast from the past for this. Uh, the first time I built this particular kit was actually for a promo for the very first ever Flory Models bottle of wash. So I built this particular kit and we did it in a grey to demonstrate what good colour the dark dirt was. So really it's a little bit of a homage back to that one. Uh, it was never done as a video build or anything else like that and it's something I've always thought it'd be nice to come back and build another one. And now we've actually got the French group build that's going on on the Flory Models site at the moment. I thought it'd be a little bit of good timing to do this one and sort of mark the anniversary with the wash being around sort of 10 years as well. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay, so we started on this one. You might expect with this type of aircraft, we're not going in with any aftermarket parts so we're not doing the traditional aftermarket seat or a color photo etch cockpit set or anything else like that because at the end of the day there's not a lot to see down in there the instrument combing on this is quite big uh, so there's not really any point doing an instrument panel type thing going on with it the seat again isn't too bad at all this is one of um, Ravel's I say they're sort of at mid 2000 kits uh, and it really does have that sort of new cutting edge to their tooling and things like that. It's a lot sharper, it's a lot crisper. Some of the details are really popping through. So when you look at things like the seat that we've already got together down in here, as you can see it actually has got some really nice details on it. It has got molded in belts, but in the great scheme of things, they're really not that bad. Just for a straight out of the box, but you see lots of detail around the back, which to be honest, you're never gonna see. The cockpit we've put together, so really it's just uh, rudder pedals put down the bottom and we've got uh, obviously the throttle and stick uh, off the HOTAS system down in there. And again, the raised details are very nice. And in these modern types of aircraft, it's not an old one with a million types of switches. They tend to keep them quite, quite minimalistic. A lot of it now is obviously, you know, multifunction displays on HOTAS systems and things like that. So you don't need those myriad of controls down each side of them and circuit breakers everywhere, which traditionally you'd have to paint up and detail by hand. So a simple dry brush literally all over this one will suffice quite nicely in a light wash and have no problem with it. The instrument panel, again, this is a one-piece one. It has this very deep down centre screen area, which is inside this big combing. It's what we're saying. It's not really worth putting anything else in there because it is so little and it is buried very deep down inside the cockpit. So really, that's just going to be a simple case of this comes on the top here. What we'll do is, I'm keeping it separate because we'll paint them all up, the cockpit colour, the inside around the, uh, the actual interior, just up in here, things like that in there. We'll get that one done and then that way we can dry brush, wash and do just a little bit of uh, hand picking perhaps with gel pens and things like that just to sharpen up the detail. The main thing with this particular kit, to be honest, is gonna be getting it seamless. There's a couple of little areas, intakes. It's a great looking jet, let's face it. Very, very sexy looking jet. French curves, we love them, okay? But the thing is, it does come at a price because you can see we're gonna have a seam just down in here where we've got these two parts which are gonna to come together uh, down under here. And again, it is this thing of, we just line these up lightly. Okay, bearing in mind we have got intakes and various things to go in here. So we're going to have to make this seem absolutely seamless. We're going to be sanding it, polishing it, and then we're going to lose some of the riveting detail and some of those little points in there. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is pop all those back in. And again, the wing system. This isn't your traditional kit where you have the wings and it's a one piece like we've seen perhaps with flankers and things like that, which you put down. We've got to put those on. So we are going to end up with a line, seam line and everything else. So really this particular kit, although we're going to push through quite quickly things like doing cockpits. Wheel well system, for instance, it is, I've already glued this in, it's a one piece fit just down in there, that, that's it, simple. Okay, um, and things like that. What we are gonna spend a lot of time is talking about how to seamlessly blend these in, making sure you've got absolute perfect seam lines uh, and your rescribing is in the same sort of area as everything else. So you can't see it, it just, it's seamless, it blends in and everything else like that. And it is a little bit of an art form, especially on a jet like this. It hasn't got angled edges where you can hide things. Normally, if you've got two areas that butt up, you can say, okay, that's no problem. Sharp it, sand it, and it's a nice clean finish, no problem at all. And the other way is normally you can hide it in a panel line, which is my other chosen preferred way of hiding things. So things like, especially on the nose, which will be the areas and the intakes and the wings, there's no actual panel lines where it goes together. A lot of these things are composite materials. So obviously it's bigger sheets. That way you can't hide things. Normally if you've got a seam line, you put a panel line in there, put a wash over it, hides it, no problem at all. And it can be quite a messy seam line, hidden away, no problem. But this particular one is 
all going to be about sanding, filling, rescribing, re riveting, and polishing the seam and checking the seam to make sure we don't get any sink marks a little bit later on. So we will be taking our time and really highly detailing those things. At the moment, though, we are literally just pushing through on this particular build quite heavily this kit as you might imagine it is quite modular so that's why the spine system is done this way so they can actually do the two seat version and the single seat uh, version of this particular kit so that way you do end up with this large spine area so obviously you can just have the different ones so again when you're cutting off the tabs you might notice down on here we've left it quite untidy that's because we've come away from it because we want to sand and get a little bit of room and it's not so bad with these ones in here we can just chomp these off but you want to leave just a little bit a spare bit of tab on here we've done it on here you can probably see a little bit better so it's not right up to the edge we've gone so that way once it is together we can sand blend it away otherwise if you cut too close you might pull that little bit of plastic out you get the white stress mark in there you've got fill it because there's no way you can sand back into it so you otherwise you can have a dent so again this is what this particular build is going to be about it's actually quite a straightforward kit it's actually a very very nice kit i've built it before as we know but what i want to show you on this particular one is more about the sort of sanding filling and the processes that are all going to go on behind that so what i'm going to do is push through now get the cockpit all together and things like that we can work on the nozzles all the interior pieces to go in there then we can talk about preparation for bringing it together getting it all in one and then going through that all important sanding and filling process Okay, so we're coming together really quickly. So I'll show you, you exactly what we've done. Okay, move those. Right, cockpit section for the seat. To be honest, it's very, very straightforward. You can see, just got the components all running down on there. This back bit, yeah, again, you're not going to see any of it because it's going to be in the cockpit. If you, you do want to paint it up, you can do. So we said before, the seat itself is actually quite a nice seat. It's very nicely detailed, no problem at all. So we've got it on a grip stick. It's going to be painted black pretty much like everything else here. The main thing is this cockpit area. So what we've done, you can probably see down in here, we've got the tub in and we've got the rear part now. It says it just down in here, so we've got down. The only thing we've done different is we've got the instrument combing, technically fits down to the bottom of this, okay? And then we have the instrument panel in. We've done it slightly different because what I've done is I've already glued the top half with the instrument panel in and the rear parts underneath this. Now this is gonna be quite straightforward. I'm gonna take that off there. This little guy here is then gonna come up and it's gonna fit underneath, okay? So the idea being is, it just makes it a little bit easier for coming in and painting, okay? And if I've got this correctly round the right way, we just find the foot base, there it is. It's gonna fit in there just like that and it's a really nice fit it's just that what i need to do is obviously get in here for dry brushing and stuff like that so it'd be easier to do it and around the instrument panel the instrument panel we've actually put in into here because again i can dry brush it from this side so it's just working out angles to make it easier to get in there with dry brushing and doing those types of things are just like that so what we need to do is paint the inside of this cockpit all black. Uh, it's very strange, I must admit, it's one of those colors you don't seem to see with cockpits, but the French have decided that it's obviously a better working environment for its crews, so they've done it all completely black in there, very reminiscent to the sort of 1950s, 60s jets, before everything sort of shifted over to being light ghost gray, or dark ghost gray. Was it dark gold gray? One of those. All right, so that's this one. So we're just gonna pop in some black. Now this has, to be honest, already had self-leveling thinners in this, uh, already okay so what we're going to do we're just going to paint up the black on the seat so let's check our flow okay again this has been thinned already so we're going to have to go around to just prime it first so a nice uh, light dusty coat just in amongst here okay so we'll just leave that to one side to dry off a little bit and then we're going to come in with a cockpit now inside this cockpit area we have got other things going on because the side stick and things like that, they tend to be more of a, a very dark gray. So what we'll do is we're gonna go around and dry brush this in that said dark gray. Okay, so we're just making sure we're coming from all these angles. And the front and everywhere in between okay so we just let that dry off as well and then just in around the cockpit so we're just going to do this edge okay. 
tank. Then in amongst the screen. And again, this is the nice thing about doing it this way, because you can get into all the angles. And then we might as well do this front combing, because we can dry brush this as well. And again, we're just going to do a little bit of bite. Okay. So it is a little bit of a shortcut doing it this way, but it's a nice easy straightforward so we just come back to this seat and those areas in there just like that so we just get rid of the airbrush okay very nice so what we're probably going to do because we need to break this up and we want it to be quite subtle but we need to be able to see all these details we're probably going to go around and give this a dry brush with something like a gunship gray okay so that way it's a nice off color uh it'll then enable stuff to pop out and then what we'll do we will just go through for switching things like that and we'll come in there with an even lighter gray something like a uh, a dark ghost gray something else like that just so the switches come to life and also when you look at it the control grip looks to be a more rubbery color more on the lines of something between sort of gunship grey and uh, light ghost grey, something else like that. So what we can do is make up a couple of custom colours just to bring it to life. There is some yellow bits and pieces in there as well, so that's something we want to look at. And obviously the seat, the cushions, things like that, they have different colours as well. So we can certainly bring those to life with a little bit of dry brushing and then maybe a little bit of a wash right over it just to highlight some of the areas, some of the corners, some of the recesses, things like that as well. Okay, so cockpit sections are dry, as you can see, just looking nice, flat black. Again, I do like the Tamiya's rubber black. I say it every single time I do use it. I really do, it's a nice color. So what we're gonna do, if you look at our little palette down here, this is what the colors we're gonna work with. So obviously this is like a rubbery black. So as you look at it on here, it's got a little bit of a gray hue to it anyway. So that's what we want. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick out obviously highlighted areas, which we know like the grips, things like that, the throttle, those types of areas are gonna be done in this gray, a lighter one. Everywhere else is gonna be dry brushed in this darker gray. So what we've actually got for the darker gray is we were saying gunship gray, which is basically XF24. And then we've got natural gray XF53 uh, for the more highlighted areas, okay? So because we want to do the highlighted areas first, but we want it all to be quite subtle, we're gonna actually go with a lighter color that way we can put some darker shades over it with the uh, the other one all right so we've got quite a big brush here but this is the the effect because we're going to run around everywhere we just picked up a little bit on the brush usual thing knock it off and what you're trying to do is basically make sure you've got no heavy o see the dark patch so do the brush from all the little areas give it little squashes and then give it a light rub and what you're trying to do, if you're using paper towel, you can see exactly the type of effect you're gonna get. So it's this thing, when you start rubbing, you don't see anything at all, and then you keep rubbing, and then it comes through. And that's the way you want. That way it gives you greater control as you're rubbing around everywhere. So we can probably use the gator grips now. So we start down uh, just in the, the cockpit areas, just for the moment. So we're just gonna slightly and lightly just come in. So we're gonna go around the control grip quite a bit because obviously that needs to be done in these colors. Okay, so we're just picking out the instrumentation areas, the side panels, things like that on there, just like that. Okay, and then the same again on this one where the actual throttle is as well. Okay, and then we're just gonna run around everywhere very lightly, just to highlight these areas so again big flat area so we're just going to lightly work over it okay and then just over these now these will appear a little bit dark but what we're going to do is run over it again with the darker shade just to knock it all back okay so this back panel looks quite light in comparison with the rest of it so what we're going to do is just going to hang around and dry brush this rear panel really just to lighten it up quite significantly okay so again just all over the place all right so that gives us our cockpit starting to pop to life and then exactly the same down in here so this instrument panel actually is a lot lighter than other areas so we're just going to get down amongst it 
Okay, brushing from all the different directions. Okay, it's end on top. And then over here as well, we've got lots of different facets and angles to play with. So we're going to catch those all in the light. As you can see, it all pops, comes to life very, very nicely. Okay. So that's exactly that type of effect we want with it. So at the same time, we're going to run around and do the seat. Now, the seat is going to have some detail painting a little bit later on down the line. But again, you can probably see how well the paint lasts. You're not keep dubbing back into there and grabbing more uh, paint because you've got more time to build up the little layers, okay? And because you've got more time to build up the layers, you're less likely to make a mess. So it is that thing, less is definitely best, okay? So just remember when you're brushing up and down, backwards, diagonals, all the rest of it to fill in areas, all right? And then down on the seat as well because we can change the seat cushion and we can pick out the harness a lot afterwards, but for the moment we're just trying to get in amongst it all. Okay, and there's that done as well. All right, so that's the three areas we're doing. So that's quite nice. Now we are gonna pick in there with some detailed painting, but now we're gonna come in with a gunship gray. So we'll just give this a bit of a shake. Okay, and then same thing again. Now this will overcoat some of the other areas and probably see on a little palette down here the difference we've got in color. So again, knocking off all those heavy areas, checking your brush making sure it's all mostly off. Okay, and then again, we're just gonna come back in and we're gonna restart up here. And this will darken it down quite significantly on the areas where we don't want it just as much. So the black areas we're quite happy with. Around here, we're just going in, but this is just giving us multiple dimensions. Not so much, obviously, down in the cockpit areas, but perhaps the edges though. So we're just going to pop some of this in those edges, okay, over the control sticks because that will give good high contrast. So we just do those throttles and then back over, okay, and as I said we will pop back down in there and do other things. And there we go, really popping to life, alright, so exactly the same up here on this instrument combing so this will tone it down just a little bit and it will give it a nice depth okay and then these ones just a little bit again extra dimension down on there the seat probably not quite as much as everywhere else so we're just going to pop around on the seat cushions as I say, because we have got some various things going down in there but and the head box, but the rest of it I'm probably going to leave as is because I'm quite happy with how that's come out. We don't need to darken it down at all, but you can probably see on that cushion set now it's looking actually quite nice, really nice. Okay, so that's those in just like that. So the final step is just a little bit of metals and things like that. So we don't want to do huge big areas. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab a little bit of uh, an aluminium Okay, so down in here we're using the Mr. Metal ones, but any metallic will do really. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, MC218. Uh, okay, so this is a buffable paint as well. So if you wanted to, you could knock it back just a little bit. So what we're going to do, same as we've done all the others, just grab a brush full, knock it all off. Now this is a buffable, so it will be quite strong. But we need this strong contrast just to do the switches. So we just pop it down in here like this. And then very lightly, we're just going to pop over those switches and the gauges and areas, just like this, just to really bring them to life. We can do some scuffing type work just down on these areas. And there we go, really just makes it pop. And if you wanted to, you've got various things on here. You can just pop a little bit of this around just to give it that look of warm metal. Again, it's going to highlight and come along with the grey work which you've already put down, which is your foundation, if you like, for this. Also, the thing is, when you're using any type of metals like this, it makes everything look really heavy. So you want to avoid it on 
cushions and things because obviously they're not going to be metally but everywhere else you can just give it a very light rub over just to give that really nice warm metal look to things again up the front here there's not too much going on we're just going to pick out perhaps a little box up the front here maybe these little bits on the hud but generally not really too much in here just a few little switches same type of thing and again this is that thing keeps giving so you're not going to have to worry too much about it okay and that is it now again you could pop in there now with some colors so if you wanted to you could do some little yellow switches some red switches things like that down in there obviously check your references make sure you're happy with those before you sort of you know commit to colors in certain areas but certainly when it's in the safe locations a lot of yellow in there because obviously little catch covers things like that right the way over it but generally this little thing when we'll come in here i do believe we can sit him in so we've actually got the pilot seat in there fits in there quite like that and then this will come up in here just like this so again you don't see too much of all the uh, the operations uh, just gonna make sure this is in. there we go so it's okay so we have got to move that seat I'm thinking that seat not quite sure how it's supposed to line up. I thought it would go to the rear tab. Let me just make sure we have got that in there. I think there is a gap between the back of the seat, it looks like, and the forward part. I would be hastened to add it. sort of goes more to the rear, but it doesn't actually give you a, a positive location to where the seat goes. So we're effectively thinking it sort of sits in there like that and then again this will then it's just going to pop in here it's going to sit up and give you your nice area i'm not sure if we can get the seat i think we can we can probably put this in without the seat needing to be in there for the moment which is probably going to be more handy but you can probably see there down in there that's all in there very nice very worn and everything else so what we do we just check our areas make sure we're all correct if we are then what we can think about doing is putting the uh, canards in because they're a one-piece canard system that fits in there we have got a little sink mark so we're gonna have to take care of it if you can see it just down here by my nail so we're gonna have to take care of that in the meantime I've started to do other things as well so the tail is dead simple just two sandwiches together and then we've got the aerials down here on both sides these blade ones stuck in as well so that's gonna be quite a nice touch that one's ready to go you can also get rid of the work start with the wings if you want to the fuel tanks the weapons all the little bits and pieces as you're waiting to paint to dry okay this is a great kit it's going together very very nicely so we've got uh where should we start intakes okay intakes two piece intakes now unfortunately they do go in to nowhere there's just a void down here there's nothing going on so these intakes once they're in i don't know if i have got the left and right the right way maybe we clearly don't okay these are just going to plug in here okay and fit in there is going to be a little bit of tidying work to get this in and all the rest of it but you've got two options you can either put it in now okay but the trouble is this nose is always wiggling around and because it's wiggling around you're always going to be stressing this particular joint okay so what i'm more inclined to do is just leave them off to one side for a moment and we'll get both halves to it done now the interesting thing is when you come forward with the forward canard you go to put this in if you notice there's a small problem as in they don't fit it's nowhere close to it this is because this needs to pinch quite a bit you're fine when you look at it at the top and you put the canards in here no problem at all but when i test fitted it and i put these in i'm thinking what the hell have we got the wrong canards is there a different sizing between the naval version and the sort of air force version but um, no it's okay it's just going to take a little bit of squeezing around to get it in so cockpit is all done looking absolutely lovely fantastic no problem with that very very straightforward very easy we can do a little bit more detail with it uh, afterwards but for the moment we've just glued that in put it in place we've also put the spine area in just so that can start drying we are going to have to do a little bit of touch-up work just back here but that's no much, uh, not too much of a problem and just making sure you've done the things as pointed out in the instruction i.e you've got the main wheel well in i know it's very straightforward and you've actually got the front wheel wheel well in it does say in here in the instructions to open up the two holes at the rear but the thing is 
they're already there. Okay, don't forget this is the upgraded tooling, so it's actually put the holes in the back already. So that is where your uh, arrestor hook is going to fit in here a little bit later on. And is most of the other holes. The only ones that are sort of missing is obviously we've got one down in here. I've checked the instructions, it doesn't say about anything on the outside anyway, so I'm pretty fine, but there is in the place of it a tiny little dot anyway so if we did need to get in there we know we can still find it all right so it's just a case of buttoning it up together then so making sure you don't glue the forward canards okay so what we're going to do is i think probably the easiest way is we just put the rears in first and then we think about the front afterwards because you can probably see we have got a very large overhang but it will pinch together so don't worry too much about it it just looks a lot lot worse than it actually is okay so we're just gonna generally line these up and we're just seeing what fit issues have we got and it does appear that we do have some clashes top and bottom and when you look around you can just see the odd little marks you're just running your finger down just making sure it's all absolutely fine I think we're okay now just these little areas and again just making sure they are nice on both sides because as I said the less work you need to do with this big old seam, the better. So I'm just running my finger around it all, making sure I've got this little one here. The whole point of sanding this guy here, just like this, so it's flat, is we can take care of it from the outside, but just make sure you haven't got any little bit of stress. Well, you cut it off the sprue, sticking up. Okay, I'm just gonna sand that front. I think we're all gonna be nice. Let's try that again. Okay, and again, that's a lot nicer fit now. Went in very, very well. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna start on this edge and we're just gonna slowly work our way around. Now something I've been doing many, many years now is just chucking this together and thinking, yeah, that'll do, it'll be fine. It won't. It's always gonna come back and bite you. So what I tend to do now is take my time and do it in sections. So like this bit here just needs a little tiny nudge and we're going to have a perfect, it means no filler, nothing's required. This seam edge down in here. So this is the quick drying glue. We're just going to hold it and we're going to very slowly work our way around in section. So we'll do that part there, then we'll do the rear, let that dry for a moment, we'll flip it over and then we'll do the same on the other side. But we're just trying to start these off on the right footing. Okay, so it's starting to dry, so we can just come in this area here. Plenty of glue, let it soak down and in. Okay, and then a little bit just around the back here. A bit of a pinch. Okay, so we're making sure this edge is flat together. That way when obviously we come in with the wings, because we've got edges and edges, you can end up then with gaps and stuff. And the less work we need, the better. Okay, so that's down there. And then we're just gonna come along here. So we've got this rear section, bit of a bit of glue in there. And then we're just gonna put a little bit each end. And we're just going to work our way up this side now. So again. I'm just going to do that. And then we're just going to come in here. And then again, we're just going to get that as flat as we possibly can. So we just maneuver it just a little bit. Okay, just to hold it. Just put it in. So it's coming on quite nicely. So again, it's just this thing. It's just time and patience. And this one again doesn't look particularly nice so it's just going to take a little bit just to work it all down in there then from the inside we just take a drop and then drag it across two of and then the capillary action will pull that down and then we can just very lightly squeeze from the outside and we're just manipulating it a little bit to make sure it's fine and it's as square and as level as we can possibly make it so we're just going to hold that there just for a couple of moments and then what we're going to do we're going to leave it now you can probably see how these are hanging out so what we need to do once that's dried this area is just a little bit better what we can do then is actually come in and then slide the canard system down and in and then we can then carry on gluing along the front but we don't want to put any too much stress on this because what it's going to do is just pull apart these two and we're just making sure that those gaps are the best they can possibly be Okay, so we're just making sure that's all nice and glued, all right? So we just wait literally a couple of minutes, let that one dry. When we're happy, we'll move forward. But you might notice it's got a bit of a step here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull it slightly. So we're just trying to get that one to smooth out. 
as much as possible. And there it is, that's not looking too bad at all. Okay, we just need to glue down this rear section. Needs a little bit of a peg, I think, just to pull it in, just to hold it in there. And then what we'll do, we're just gonna re-glue these edges so they're in. Okay, we can might temp fade actually, it's going together really well, so we will. Okay, so we're just going to take the canard system, going to pull it back, pull it up, flip it over. Now, this little guy has then got to pull in both sides and drop in, and then I'm hoping we'll be able to get those canards out of the way a little bit. Just depends if we can just move them slightly. Now, minimal glue. You can see as the glue hit it, it pulled out. So we're just going to give it a little bit of a pinch. And then we're just making sure that canard is sitting in its proper place. Okay, and then what we're going to do, slowly, slowly, just work this right the way through. And these are all these joins where we're spending our time making sure they're nice because it'll save us a hell of a lot of work a little bit later on because we have got some very nice details down in here that really we don't want to mess around with too much. So we're just going to hold all of that and let it all go off. And again, I'm probably rushing this. You're going to want to take more time and a little bit more care just to make sure all this is in here. So I'm just going to grab a nose. Nice touch, Ravel. You put this little guard on to gauge or to hide or support or whatever on this little aerial down on here. It's a nice touch. I like that. Okay, so this has come undone again. So I'm just going to use a little bit more glue. And then, as I say, the other side, we've got to pull in and clip him. So we're just going to hold this a second. Okay. And then again, tiny little bit of glue. Nothing too much. Beginning to bite now. So we just come in. It doesn't matter if you go too much, but we're just trying to pull all this in. But as you're pulling it in, just line it up. Just literally wiggle it slightly. And then when you're happy, you can come in with a lot more glue. And you can brush out the marks. Again, this is going to be one of those, we know we're going to lose some of this detail. We're just trying to get it in as best as possible so we don't end up having to over sand it and take up of these things we've got a couple of little repairs to do on here you can probably see we've got this nasty little sink mark just on the top so we are going to be coming here with the filler anyway so I don't think that this is going to be a, a walk in the park because clearly it's not now these canards are probably going to start to want to glue in place so you can lightly just wiggle just a little bit or you can then think I'm gonna leave them just in the forward facing position okay just like that and there we go that's one on there so what we've got to do next is come in and blend in these wings okay and to be honest they aren't too bad we are gonna have you probably notice we got a little bit of rocking on them so we're gonna try and get rid of that we'll show that in a moment once this is totally dry that one's actually not too bad. The other side's more of a problem. But we've got those. But the biggest problem we're going to have is making sure that these come in nice and clean. But now we've got the two halves together. That's a far, far better join. That's actually not too bad, actually. Just need to do a little bit of work just around here. It's not a perfect fit, but we can make it pretty good, I reckon. 
But there we go, it's starting to take shape. Again, before we get in with there, we've got to sand in here. There's lots of little steps on this one because otherwise you can see these joints. So first job up for us is literally going to be taking care of all of this nose, making sure it's all good, no problem with that. Then we can come in and we can try and get the intakes in as seamless as we possibly can. Then we can get the wings fitted. Then we can get the tail on this guy here okay and we can pop this little guy in and everything else and then it's going to be a case of going around smoothing out all these joints any little problems it has any re-riveting any re-scribing because again this is one of these aircraft it's very curvy so you need to take care of those curves because any lines any joints as soon as we get in there then with obviously gray paint then you're going to come back with washes everything's going to stand out like a sore thumb so it's best to take care of them as you make your way through the build as it's easier to get to them as well so that's why now we're going to do this under section because if we've got the intakes in there it's quite difficult to get in there so forth and so on but first of all we need it all completely go off and dry because we don't want anything pulling apart <laughs> 